Module number five, working with your partner. So as I mentioned earlier, every relationship goes through phases like dating, engagement, and then marriage. So don't rush into a partnership that doesn't feel right for you. In module number five, we're going to go over a few things you need to consider and remember as you build a working relationship with any co-marketing partner. So let me start by saying many small businesses or many co-marketing partnerships are successful when built on nothing more than a handshake. However, for many situations, you'll need to remember when it comes to co-marketing partnership agreements, uh, one size doesn't fit all. In fact, agreements can be simple one page, if you do this, I'll do that type of agreements, or they can be complicated multi-part contracts. It's really necessary to prevent misunderstandings and all co-marketing partnerships really should have a written agreement, no matter how simple the relationship. So the last thing I want you to remember is know when to say no to an agreement if it doesn't feel right to you. You can always find another partnership opportunity. Lastly, you should loop in a legal partner on both sides to help write your co-marketing agreement. Your legal teams will be the ultimate source of truth on what needs to be included in any final partnership contract. So if you have a legal team, use them, have them introduced to your uh, potential partner and have them work together. But again, don't let the attorneys get in the way. You know, you wanna have the simplest agreement you can have and the basic, if you do this, I'll do that agreement, targeted at maybe even a one-time event or campaign is the simplest form and then if things work out, you could write a more comprehensive agreement that might cover a longer term relationship. So one size does not fit all, uh, start with the handshake, get something on paper and then go from there. So as we talked about one size not fitting all, what goes into an agreement? Well, when you're negotiating with your potential partner, you're gonna to wanna to consider covering a bunch of different areas. So. Uh, but there are some basic things like the beginning and ending date of your agreement, management considerations, res who's responsible for what, what is the contribution of each partner. You want to want to talk about conflict resolution should it come up. Are you going to go, you know, through arbitration? Are you going to just uh, have a third party kind of work it out for you? You want to look at the frequency of the necessary meetings and communications. You don't want to sign an agreement and then not talk to each other for a while. You're going to want to look at potential partnership considerations outside of endorsements, right? You want to know who's going to be the decision maker. Um, who's going to handle the joint staff that might be working together? Or who's going to handle the distribution of resources? Or how is customer service for your new bundled offering? going to be handled, right? Um, if you wait until there's a problem in any of these areas, you could find yourself in an unpleasant situation. So it's always better to have established these mutual expectations before the partnership is finalized. Again, consulting with your legal team is the most secure path for ensuring you have everything you need when it comes to creating your co-marketing agreement. So just remember that it's always best to have numbers, timelines, and content creation responsibilities outlined on paper before getting started on any campaign. So that's it for module number five. In module number six, we're going to look at how to launch your co-marketing campaign. So go ahead and move on to module number six when you're ready.